My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord. It is the honor of my life to serve God here under Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Mom Alice, who is in the house today. Come on, celebrate. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kuna ngemizi na nijenga hapo yani. I love it so much. Love it so much. Um, and I, I bless God for the opportunity to be standing in this service for the first time in a long time, actually. Um, and this time to say, I came with my wife. Woo! <laughs> I'm, oh, where is she? Please, my wife, please stand. Just, just, I, I mean, I mean, Sasa Kunawageni, my wife. <laughs> You know, it's so funny, it's Pastor Alice. We say, where is she? <laughs> and we bless the Lord. We have such cheerleaders in the house, Yanni, and we bless the Lord. Um, last Monday, we turned four months. Yeah. Going on four years. <laughs> and into 40, we are tapping into the grace of 40 years. <laughs> and we bless the Lord. Oh, okay, you're not too excited, Nani, four months. Sisi kuja kutrabia, saa four months tu nkwa jen, wee kana yo. Wee wacha tu kwe excited. Sisi tu kona spark. Tunaenda kuongeza. <laughs> Ah, hey, 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 I've waited 32 years to start that introduction. Seven years since I became a pastor to say, I came with my wife. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, Christian spiritual disciplines is where we are at today. We started that series. In case you're a visitor, in this church we like to study, to go through themes. And so this season we're looking at Christian spiritual disciplines. We just started last Sunday. So in case you are here, you have just moved into the estate and you're looking for a church, please look no further, Karibu Nyumbani, and this is what we are doing right now. If you're visiting, please, when you go back to your church, tell them that you came from a church where they were doing a theme, and the theme was Christian Spiritual Disciplines. Pastor Richard did a stellar job last week introducing to us the importance of Christian spiritual disciplines. And there are many, just in case you are not here, uh, um, there are many Christian spiritual disciplines. So what are Christian spiritual disciplines? This is just for the people who did not come last Sunday. These are devotional and physical activities. Devotional and physical Devotional to mean some of them may not be physical, devotional, like meditation, it's not physical. And then there are physical activities like praying, it is both, you can do them outward, celebration, those things. So they are both devotional and spiritual and um, physical, thank you, activities that engage our hearts and our minds to focus on our God and they draw us closer in intimacy with God. Buona iso so that is what Christian spiritual disciplines are. And there are many examples. There is Bible study. There is Bible reading. There is meditation. There is fellowship. There is confession. There is praying and fasting. There is celebration. There is so many types of Christian spiritual disciplines. We may not be able to look at all of them if we tried. But today, we want to begin with this one. And we are looking at Bible study. Bible study. That's the Christian spiritual discipline that we are looking at today. Now, according to Richard J. Foster, who has written a book called Celebration of Disciplines, um, in uh, Bible study is categorized as one of the um, one, one of those devotional acts. It is one of those ones that um, are an inward discipline. You do them for yourself, mostly on the in it happens. It does work on the inside, okay? And so that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, usually when you want to illustrate something or to define something, you start by saying what the original thing is. But just for the purposes of our sharing today, I'd like to say uh, what it's not. So what is not Bible study? I have just one. Bible study is not Bible reading, okay? So I'm going to describe the difference. So I'm going to just explain some of the things. What is Bible reading then? It is not Bible study. Bible reading is the act of interpreting and comprehending or understanding written scripture. So Bible reading is just interpreting and understanding written scripture. Okay? For instance, we have a written scripture in the book of our hearts. It's John 3.16. That's where we are reading from. And it says, for God... So loved the world. Okay, if it's not in your heart, it's on the screen. You can read it with us. Let's go together. For God. But have. Now, this language that we read in is a language that we all understand. It's a language called. Ing a. It's a language called. Allah. It's a language called. 
English. Imagine you're right. Just say English. Eh, hey, so tulisema tuna relaxed ko garage. Na relaxed tuna kitu tu hivyo. It's a language called English. So as you're reading it, you are not trying to wonder what language is this? Is this Greek? Is this Hebrew? Is it no? We understand it already. What we've done is just to merely read. It is we are interpreting the language that we understand and understanding what has already been written. So when we say for God so loved the world, these are English words that have been put together in the scriptures and they make sense to us. Bwana asifiwe. That is what Bible reading is, or that's an example of Bible reading. Bible reading allows us to explore a wide range of topics. That's why when you're reading a book, you can go through so many pages in just one sitting. Why? Because you're just going, you're just going, you're just reading. You're just moving on and on and on, and on and on and on, and on and on. Like when you're reading the finance bill, you remember that time? Okay, a few of us studied it, but there are those ones who just read it. And you just could cover something. I don't know how many of you have read the Constitution cover to cover. M maybe just one person, just for the fun of it, by the show of hands, if you've read the Constitution, let's just see. Okay, n really no. Oh, yes, there's, there's, there's one person, Pastor Anne, has read the Constitution. Me, I've read Chapter 5 of the Constitution because when I was in school, it had to do with um, the environment and we had to read it. So that's, that's all I know. Some of us didn't even know that there's a Chapter 5. <laughs> and it is well. Imagine it is okay. You are living in this country. It is well. So anyway, um, as, you're, as you're doing Bible reading or if you're reading a constitution or reading whatever, you can just cover large chunks of uh, material just by reading. Okay? Reading allows you to explore a wide range of topics. What it does is that it gives you exposure to ideas. One example of reading that all of us engage in is the reading that we do on social media every day. When you're just scrolling through, by the end of the day you have so much information. If we opened your mind, to see all the things. Uko nyuma ya matatu, unasoma hivi, unaona, oh, miandiko ya nini, mekwambia kitu, matatu, imekwambia ujumbe, unaona zile ujumbe za matatu pale nyuma? Ama zile stickers zikondani ya matatu ukiwa ndani. Izo, you read, if you pay attention to those things like I do. That is a lot of reading that happens. It allows you, it gives you exposure to many ideas. That is what study is not. Bible study is not those things. So what then is Bible study? Bible study is a devotion of time and attention to gaining knowledge of a subject. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, time and attention. Those are the things that are really important in Bible study. You remember in reading, you do not need to devote any time or attention to it. You can read something um, um, you know, absent-mindedly. I don't know whether you are like me in school. Some days during the evening prep after you have eaten the ugali and cabbage, and you just sit down, or githeri, really, depending on where you went to school. Or, okay, or like fries and sausages if you went to like groups of schools. Um, depending on where you studied really, sometimes you kwa preps umeshiba. You read the whole page. And you go and you go and you reach to the bottom. Then you ask yourself, nimesoma nini? Then you go back to the top, now to read with intention. And you read and you realize the intention is going away. And you realize umemaliza tena hii page na ujashika kitu. Are you people like me? Reading does that. Sometimes we read the Bible even some, uh, like that. Reading that can happen. But with studying... When you are studying something, you must devote time and attention. You must take a chunk of time. And the reason why you're doing that is so that you can understand, so that you can be able to gain knowledge of a subject. If you're, Bible, if you're studying the Bible, you are taking a chunk of time and attention so that you can understand something. When you're reading, I can sit down and in one sitting, I can blast through the book of Haggai. Haggai has how many chapters? Two. You can blast through Haggai. Or you can blast through a book called Philemon. Or Philemon. Or two moja. Or you can blast through Jude. One chapter. You can just, in one sitting. But a study, a study of Jude, one, one, one chapter, can take you even a week. True or true? Why? Because you're zeroing in on one thing and you want to understand what does this mean. We're saying when, you, when you're studying the Bible, you are dedicating or devoting a chunk of time and attention so that you can gain knowledge of a subject. And that is what is required of every believer. We're saying it is a Christian spiritual discipline. It is required in us. We used to say in Sunday school, read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. As you continue to mature, just reading the Bible is not enough. Every believer has the responsibility, not just the pastors or the leaders. Every believer, turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, we're talking about you. 
every one of us has a responsibility to study, to take chunks of time. And those chunks of time must be chunks of time that make sense. We're not necessarily talking about the length of time because I may sit down and tell myself I'm going to study the Bible for three hours. And I have the attention span of a goldfish. So if we are saying it must make sense, what might work for her might not work for me. We are not trying to intimidate one another. Maybe for me the chunk of time that I can actually be attentive is 20 minutes and that's it. And so I'll sit down with those 20 minutes, I will study something and it will be beneficial to me. Somebody else can push through and plow through the study for two hours and they are good. They have been attentive for the entire two hours. God bless you people. I know a chunk of people, a group of people like those ones who can be attentive for hours. They are called the pastors. The pastors in this church. There's a Monday meeting we usually have, let me just tell you. And we are usually attentive from minute one to minute last. Because our moderator cannot allow you to be not attentive. <laughs> our moderator is, is in the house today. And those meetings start at 11. Sometimes we find ourselves finishing at 5.30. And the reason why we have finished is so that we can go for prayers, which are starting at 6. But these people are just attentive. They have such attention spans. When I'm saying they, even me, I'm including myself by the masses of God. attention span. It is acquired. Una hotspot you na jirani yako. Yako ikiisha, jirani yako anaku hotspot. Attention yake, muna songa mbele. But it's not a competition when you're studying the Bible. It is a personal journey, Sindio. This is called the walk of faith. It is safari am safiri. That's what my grandma used to call it in her language. The journey of faith, it is you that knows where you are going, so you take time, time and attention. Tell your neighbor, time and attention. You take chunks of time. It is an active process. It is an active, you cannot be absent-minded. When you realize you're starting to get absent-minded, then it is time for you to pause and go back just a little bit and tell yourself, I need to be attentive. It means then, if it is an active process and you need to have time and attention, then you must look at the chunks of time where hausumbu liwi sana. For instance, for me, those times are morning. Morning for me is the best time for me to study. Best time. Because I know nobody's calling me at five in the morning. If they are calling me at 5 in the morning, it's an emergency. But most of the days, actually ordinary days, nobody calls me at 5 in the morning. So that is the time I know, there will be no distractions. I can be attentive. Most of the times I know, even outside, the children of the flat where I live, sometimes they scream, you want to leave the house wondering what is happening. Kumbe, they are just playing. If I want to study during the day, I will study, there's a day in, in the office, you know where we, in the office, there is a school, only the best school in the nation, Cornerstone Academy. When they have, there's a day called Fun Day. That Fun Day, you see the way the pastors have reacted. That Fun Day, they scream. They have a train that comes up, kwa parking up, chini. Wakona camels, wakona horses. Kwa hiyo compound tu, kuna mifugo na binadamu tuko uko sisi wote. And let me tell you, the children scream at the top of their lungs. I don't know what happens. On that fun day, you can't work in the office. If you have counseling, you bring it to Shiloh that day. Because who in, you can't do anything. Right now, the kids are on holiday. Man, it is so peaceful. <laughs> hey, it is kumenya maza true, and it's, oh, you can think, you can hear your thoughts. My wife likes to say, I can't hear my thoughts. So sometimes she wants, even when she's praying, during worship you'll notice many times, okay, but during worship you'll notice many times she sits down. When the music is loud, you your worship team to ingia sasa, dung, 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 nauliza hawa, eka, 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 yote. Sasa, you are like, I can't even hear what I'm telling God. So she sits down to go away from all the noise. Utapata hapo umeambia God, I forgive you, master. I for so, so, so she sits down so that she can hear her thoughts. Me, on the other hand, me, I can, eh, yeah, 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 yeah. Me, on top of praying while I am making noise, I also walk. I, in Aitwa Maombia, kilometrics. Una, una, you get in your steps as you're also, you know? Some of us are like that. Pastor Washo Bonas, your son. Now, I'm trying to say you must find a chunk of time that works for you, that makes sense. So for me, it's going to be in the morning when I know people are not going to call me. If I say I'm going to do my Bible study during the day, my day is open to everyone. Because I'm a pastor. I can be called anytime, anywhere, by whoever. By numbers that I don't know. Me, I don't have those things for a T.O. Then I would never pick any calls. 
But there is a tool that the Lord has released to the body of Christ called True Caller. Oh, hallelujah. Nimetoa siri ya wachungaji. Mahalo, pastor. Nsema, hi, Joy. Wow, wow, wow. So, sama, oh, pastor, you know it's me. I'm like, ah. And then the, the, the wall has already been broken. Now the ice, now we can just go in as close friends. Anyway, so during the day is not the time for me. Now for my wife, however, let me tell you one of the things about being married. You have free, a free person for giving examples with. Just any time, any kind of content. <laughs> so for her, she's a night person. During the night, oh my God, she's so active. So active. That the, the night is her time. Sometimes I see her with a book. Kitabu kikubwa. I'm like, even during the day, I will not go near that book. A big book. She's such a reader. Kitabu, if you know, and she's just plowing through that book in the night. Me, I could never. My night, kutoka 11, I am done. I have, the mind is closed. There is no room for thinking. Tupatane kesho asubui. And some of you are like me. So her time for studying the Bible is usually that time. Hapo ni unasikia mefanya study. Ya kosejui kings, first kings. Kuna kitabu kinipea usiku. Kings. But now during the morning, yeah, tapita tu hapo, good morning. Maenda zake, hata ana hiyo nguvu. I'm trying to say, you pick a chunk of time that works for you. And then the other thing together with time was attention. So it means there are some things you must do as you're reading the Bible to have effective Bible study. For instance, some of you know, your phone is like an ER doctor. Emergency room. Nani alerts. Unaambiwa, there's traffic on Gong Road. Where ni kama traffic commandant. You're working from home, but that date is telling you there's traffic on Gong Road. Please be careful. There's an accident on my Mahio. Please be on Malaba Road. Malaba Road, uko kwa nyumba kwako ata. But you're doing your Bible study on your phone. Mm, you're trying to. Attention in Afanyo Ikue. It is being snuffed out. So what do you do? Then you get your fish out for your Makaratasi Bible. You know the hard copy one? Ile inetwa the sword of the spirit. Yo, unachukue yo. Now that is the one that you use. Kwa sababu ma devices, sazi luko hapa ndi wanakuambia, oh, uh, Kamala Harris has named her running me. Oh, wow. Oh, God, I pray for the U.S. You try to spiritualize it. But you know that's not what we are doing. Tell your neighbor time and attention. Because we said it is an active process and it requires three things. I'm going to blow through them really quick. The first thing of the things that um, Bible study often involves is analysis analysis. Now to analyze something is to look keenly into it. To spread it out completely to try and understand it. That's one of the things that Bible study must involve. Analysis. As you're going through the Bible, you start to ask yourself questions. You see when you're reading the Bible, you're just reading Psalm chapter 23 and the Bible says, the Lord, uh, we are reading from the book of our hearts, the Lord, I shall uh, the media team is really helping you today. Okay, let's continue. He makes me in green. He leads me. Let's continue. It says he. And he says he. In parts of four. Okay, he says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, for you with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. Let's continue. You. In the presence, you, my. Now we have just read the Bible and we have closed it and we've gone to work. But when you're studying the Bible, you get to verse 5 and you say, He prepares, a, He sets a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You're like, What does it mean to set a table? Because you're wondering, What does it mean? So you tell yourself, ah, When you're studying, you take the resources that are available to you. You start to look at the meaning of the word set. Unaelewa hapo sasa? Unaenda unatafuta commentaries. Commentaries are other people have read the Bible and written what they got from it. You go to try and also see. If ten commentaries are saying one thing and it's not what you are saying, it is highly likely that you might be missing it. You can't be saying, hey, these ten people wame uma inje. Hmm, hawajashika. Highly unlikely, sindio? Hey, so you use the resources. You use other things called, you look at different versions. 
We have soft copy Bibles these days. Those Bibles have so many versions, more than you even care to know about. Ukona KJV, NKJV, ukona ASV, American Standard Version. Ukona Sidri Amplified Version. Ukona Amplified Classic. Ukona TPT, the Passion Translation. Ukona Message Paraphrase. Ukona Vitu Nyingi. So you look at all of them. What are we doing? We are studying. We are trying to analyze a portion of scripture. Because when you read that verse 5 now, in the message paraphrase, it says, you prepare for me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You're like, ah, kumbe setting a table ni kuandaliwa. Una niandalia. Ata soma na luga ile basi yenye unailewa ya kiswahili. Ama na luga ya mama. Kuna wakati wengine tikipatana kwa pastor's meeting, either bishop or, the pastor, or, or, or pastor Alice will sometimes read a verse na luga ile ya mama kwa sababu hapo ndiyo inamnenea. So sisi hata tunaisoma na English, hata tunashindwa. Eh. Lakini ya nasema kuna, kuna, there's a time I remember pastor Alice was, um, um, it was leading us in prayer in one of our pastoral meetings. And then she quoted a line. I don't know whether it was a song or it was a, a scripture. And she said, now I, it's not a familiar kikuyu word. But the explanation was, God cannot nini when I am calling him. Go furious. Yes. God cannot furious when I am calling him. And so me, I was trying to understand, what does that mean? She was like, you know, what it means is that kofuirias is when, you, when somebody is walking away until they go, until they disappear. That is kofuirias. All right? Fearing. Mtu anaenda, ukimuita, unamuita, ni kama akuski. Anaenda, unaona, ndiyo, uya, ame. Ame, eh, ndiyo, yo. So, she was telling us, imagine the thing about God. When you call, he will answer. Every time you're calling on God, he cannot while you're calling him. Unajua kwa kizungu ye aishiki? When you call, he will answer. Lakini when it's, when it's said in that language, I was like, oh, wait a minute. It brought such a beautiful image. And God is not with his back to, uh, away from me, uh, going away from me. Atinaendelea kumuita tu ni napotelea, anapotelea na uko. No, God will answer when I call and that image changes everything. So, if you're studying the Bible as you're analyzing, even go to the language. Look at your mama. Even your default setting. Kwa wengine wetu. Enda kwa default setting. You know, somebody said, some of the older generation, when I'm talking to you like this, this second service, celebration service, is not an interpretation service, but you, you know it is very much an interpretation service. In your head, you're translating to the nearest local language, and then you bring it up to Swahili, and then it's very fast, computer work. Kwa kichwa tu. Na kuangalia saizi, unaniangalia, unasmile. Ndiyo maana wengine wetu tukona ka delayed laugh. Sazile tumecheka wengine, ha 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 ha, kuna ya mwenye inakuja badai. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's because sayo ndiyo, English, imetoka kwa nini, ikaenda kwa dholuo, ikaingia kwa kiswahili, alafu sasa imekuja kwa English. And that's fine. So when you're doing your Bible study, we are not in competition with anybody, beloved. You are trying to do this to build your intimacy and to grow in Christ. So what do you do? Go to your nearest resource. Read the Bible in your language, if that is what will help you. Apana ngangana na thee thou showest goest, sayest. King James, that are tumjui. Mnajua King James. I'm tumjui. We, itafuta ile ya kwenu. Usome iyo. Unachua, I remember in high school, the first crusade I attended when we were in high school, for the holidays, and some of the boys were preaching in Kangaro Market in Embu. And as they were preaching, this person said, even though your sins are as red as scarlet, and this person said, Zijui nini nini nkie mbu, zijui yanka media muriwaka karako, and I paused. <laughs> I paused, I was like, wait, 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 my sermon is over, mimi revelation yangu imeshikia hapo. Um, I don't care what else they are going to say. And somebody is saying, you know, the Lord is going to deliver you. Akasema, mungu ata wokora, wokora is to uproot something with the roots. Like it will not come back again. Because when you have removed something by the roots, it can't grow again. Sinikweli, umeitoa. So that is the idea of delivering. Me, I thought, whoa, 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 whoa. That is what deliverance means. When the Lord delivers you, amekutoa kabisa. I thought, wow. Maybe that's why some of our Bible study looks like it's not yielding fruit. Jutu na ngangana kusoma na King James. English. Tell your neighbor analysis. analysis. To analyze, you must use the resources that are close to you. The other thing that is involved in Bible study is memorization. Memorization. You see, the thing about reading the Bible, you will hardly memorize it. 
Because when you read imepitia tu hivi, it might stand in your mind for a few and then it will go. See, that's how we used to study for exams. Well, that's how we used to read for exams. We used to think we are studying. But we were reading for the exams. Unasoma, unasoma, unasoma. That morning, I can tell you how the process of the, the functions of the nephron. Ilikuwa kwa kidney. Doctors in the house. Ni, 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 eh, naona madaktari wenyo wananiambia uku. Eh, nawa, neze ni kakwambia. Anka tunatoka hapo naenda kwa the proximal and the distal convoluted tubule. Tunaingia pale kwa the loop of Henley. Usha kuta. Siezi kuambia zinafanya nini saizi. I can't tell. Oh, I see the doctors in the house hapo nyuma. Ah, Dr. Mark and his sister were too like, yes, you've gotten it. Say, oh, pastor, I'm a soma. Hallelujah. <laughs> but that was, it didn't help me so much because right now I can't tell you much. There's those times I could tell you about the Solve process in chemistry. At Istijui, the Haber-Bosch process. I could tell you all those things. Now I do not know anything of those things. I only know the names. They sound fancy. But I can't tell you much. But if we take time to study that thing, to really study, we will highly likely memorize everything. That's how the word is. When we are, memor- we, when we are reading the Bible, we will read it. Oh, this is, I've read it for today. Here's your word for today. Mnaona zile Bible api nakuletea kwa screen. Word for today. Masema, wow. Unaisoma na unatoka hapo. But when you are studying that word, you will highly likely not forget it. You will be able to memorize it. I have fond memories of some of the scriptures that I was taught here by teacher Julia Mburu. Kwa, ilikuwa nini? JFC, Juniors for Christ. Mi nilikuwa member by, by proxy. Nilikuwa tu hapo karibu. Siku andani, but nilikuwa nasoma tu. Kitfunzana na mi ilikuwa inaniangukia. Mungu ni wanaema kubwa. But I remember her teaching us and teaching us anarudia, anarudia, anarudia and they would, together with kina teacher Masi Kiari, they would go into the details to let us know what this word means. So I know that a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And that is Proverbs 17 22. I mean kwa sababu anatueleza what cheer, cheerful heart looks like, what it means. She's trying to, to study for us because we are so small. She's, or she's studying with us. It sticks all these years later I still remember. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Proverbs 13, verse 20. Anatuambia, you know when you walk with the wise, you grow wise. Walking is walking. She's helping us to study that portion of scripture. I still have it in memory to this day. Reading will do a little. Study will take you much further. And you need memorization of scripture in this day and age. How many of us, just by a show of hands, came to the house today with your hard copy Bible? Lift up your hands. Makaratasi Bible, I see just a few hands in the house. There's more of us that don't have it than those who do. Now, for those of us who, even me, I didn't carry my Makaratasi Bible today. But I have this one. Um, But this one dies, and sometimes it embarrasses us. Sometimes in a kufa, na nilikuwa nimekuja kwa graduation, nataka kubiri. Nataka kufungua the word of life. Alafu inapata imekufa. So now, how do we go about it now then, at that point? How do, what do we do now? What do we say? Because of that, then I must take some time to memorize. Remember we said I must devote some time and attention. I must take chunks of time and attention so that I can study, analyze, and then memorize the scripture. I remember when I gave my life to Christ in high school, one from one, and at that time, people used to, um, in the CU, they used to give us big brothers. Okay, so somebody who was a form ahead of you, a class ahead of you, and they would give you that. Not in the school. In the school, it was man eat man society, let me just tell you. But in the STU, they were godly people, so they gave us people to work with us. I was given a brother called Brother Duranira. The Lord bless his heart. I don't, we don't even have contact. I don't keep contact with him. I don't know where he is, but he made an impact in my life because every day, he would come and pick you from the dorm, wake you up at 4.50, so that you can be in the power room by 5 in the morning for morning prayer, from 5 to 5.40 or 5.30, I, I think. And then every Saturday, he would come and pick us. Anakukujia kwa darasa. Ndiyo usipotele in the free of people. Ndiyo pia usi furious. Ni furia, furia. Usifanya hivo. Because ndiyo usienda entertainment, uende kwa Bible study. Kwa service ya CU. 
ya jioni. Mimi nataka kwenda entertainment. I'm just a form one. But ana, wametumwa anakuja anakuchukua. So preps inaisha masaa kama haya 10 minutes before that ako pale kwa mlango anakungojea anakwambia come brother come. <laughs> so I'm just like oh. and I will go with him. When other people are just boom twaf boom twaf in the entertainment as we are sitting down singing songs of hymns and praise to God and reading the Bible. I mean now I thank God for it in in hindsight but at that time it wasn't very pleasant. I didn't enjoy it much. Um, and then on Sundays, every Sunday, after the day of services and nini, there was a time called free time. There was, it, was, it, was, it, was like three of, it was like three hours of free time, of just nothing. You can do whatever you want. Most people used to sleep or do their laundry on Sundays in the afternoons. Us, the CU brethren, we would be reading the Bible. It was time for Bible study using material by um, Kenya Schools Christian Fellowship, KSCF. I mean, God bless them. Now I am grateful, but back then. And so this brother would come, Brother Duranera, God bless his heart. He would come and he would pick me and he would just walk with me, ask me, how's your week been? Him is in Form 2, so he knows the perils, dangers, and toils of Form 1. He asked me, how's it been? Because our school was rough. Let me say, we? Tunasimama hapa kwa naema ya mungu. Higher bus. So tunatembea, tunaingia kwa power room. That's where the study used to happen. And we would go through just a, a portion of scripture or just a topic. Not to read the Bible, to study the word. And the theme used to be from the book of Timothy. Is it 2 Timothy chapter 2, I think verse 15, if I'm not wrong. Study therefore to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed of anything. Man, let me tell you, we used to read and study and repeat and repeat. I remember a study we did on the book of on, on faith from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. And we went in asking, what is faith? So what is not faith? What does it look like to be faith, to have faith? What does it look like to be faithless? Who are the examples in the scripture that had faith? I mean, we went through it. What does the Bible say about faith? And we went through the Bible from the beginning with Abraham all the way. Then we had a memory verse. Memory verse in Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to verse 6. So it is six days until we meet again. So every day, take one verse, read it, rehearse it, go through it, memorize it. When you meet your CU brother in the corridors of power, you are asking him, I'm a brother. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Tomorrow, we are in verse 2. Tunasonga ivo. By the time tunafika siku ya musho, tuko verse 6. Unasema, for without faith, my brother, it is impossible to please God. For everyone that has faith must believe that God is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently that's what he used to do when he was teaching us. Diligent. Those are things that got into memory that will highly likely be very difficult to remove. Because when you read the word, it can easily go. But when you study it, you're even working it into your life. All right. The third thing, therefore, is that it is an active process, Bible study, that involves analysis, memorization, and application of knowledge. Our mom, Pastor Alice, likes to tell us application makes all the difference, all the time, every time. It is application that makes a difference. You could have all the knowledge. For instance, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, me. I have watched so much medical drama and medical series. Me, I can get you into OR2 and I can sit somebody down and I can do a very complicated procedure. <laughs> Me, I have the know-how. I know how to do a perfect suture. Doctor, you have sutures? Eh, wale wengine sutures ni mshono. Sawa. I, I can do, I, I can, I, in my head, I have the knowledge. I know how to do it. I know how to begin. I know how to apply gauze. <laughs> Let me just tell you. But that is just knowledge. If you can have application, ladies and gentlemen, I can't. I will butcher you. But I I remember during ropes, whenever I go to a ropes camp, the boys usually have a chance to slaughter a goat, and the girls usually slaughter a chicken. Imagine that, a whole chicken. The screams that usually rent the air when the girls, you know, some chickens are just ime guzo ivi kidogo then ame yachilia. Then in akimbia with its head dangling, it's such a sorry sight. And even the mothers, 
are even screaming even them. Now the mothers, the girls have all ran away. Sasa tunacha the counselors akina teacher Paris ndio anakimbizana huko teacher Harriet ndio anakimbizana na kuku na huyu akimbizane na mama na ule akimbizane na mtoto wa walete pamoja. Na mimi I'm usually on the boys side most of the times. And in the boys side we usually uh, there are some men who usually come. There's always a man who knows how to chinja ambuzi and they tell us how to do it and they explain it and they put it up. I've never been part of the process. I'm, I'm usually just a curious on Luca. I usually just stand in the back. I mean, because the side of blood, guys, no. I'm immediately now. But I stand there, and you know, as a counselor, I have to be available, and I stand there, and I look at her. Right now, I can tell you exactly what you need to do when you want to eat choma from a live goat. From the process of holding it to the process where you hang it, and you remove the skin like this with the ngumi, you know that thing. And uh, yeah, I'm teaching you guys. And then to the process where it becomes nyama. And then you take the intestines and you wash them and then you, the <laughs> you do those things. I know how to do that thing in my mind. But in theory, in, in practicality, application, that is usually the hardest part. Every time you study the word, it must involve application. Applying the learned knowledge. Because many times you'll find yourself umesoma, alafu umeanalyze. Then you realize, eh, ikitu imeni guza imeni gonga, unaanza kuimemorize. As you're memorizing it, as you're going through your day, you start to find very many opportunities for you to apply the word. Many opportunities. Those are benefits of applying, of studying the word. You get to apply it. Now my time is up, allow me to finish. I've been talking about why we should study the Bible, ukondani. But together with all those things, even though I, it may be in different words, one of the reasons why we ought to study the Bible is that it replaces old destructive habits. It replaces old destructive habits. As I am reading the word, it is replacing very old destructive habits inside of me in as it replaces. Those things that are called the works of flesh in Galatians chapter 5 verse 17, we'll not get into it, but you can look at it. As I'm studying the Bible, it replaces those ones with new life-giving practices. It starts to tell me, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, whatever is good, whatever is kind, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is godly, whatever is praiseworthy, think about such things. As I'm studying the word, I take this apart and I start to look at it. What is noble? What is just? What are the things that are pure? What are the things that are lovely? What are the things that are of good report? Are these the things I am thinking about? I automatically find myself, as I analyze and memorize this portion of scripture, I'm also finding myself applying it. Every time I'm starting to think about some things or meditating about some things, I'm starting to worry. I realize, ah, that is not worthy of praise. So no, 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 no. That has no room in my mind. Are you together? It replaces those old destructive habits with new life-giving practices. Another thing that Bible study does is that it transforms our whole person. When you study the Bible, it transforms you. I know I have a witness in the house of somebody who, when they came to Christ, and then now they have started to study the word, and the person they are now and the person they were then, there is no comparison. There is a big, wide change since you got born again. Hallelujah. It comes as you study. Not just read the Bible. Reading the Bible is great, but studying the Bible gets you to a place. It transforms the entire person. It transforms your thoughts. It takes your thoughts and transforms them completely. You've just looked at about um, um, thinking about what you need to meditate upon. It transforms your speech. You read the Bible, you get to the book of James in chapter 3, and James is talking about the tongue. He says there are many animals that have been sub, um, made to submit and have been tamed. But even the king of the jungle, the lion, has been tamed by man. But the tongue, nobody has been able to do it. It, 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 he says it should not be so that a man is using the same tongue to bless our God and Father and with the same tongue he opens his mouth to curse other people. It should not be so. As you read that, as you study it, you realize there are things I'm saying, there are things that I am speaking that ought not to be spoken by a believer. Yamani Bonaiso It changes your speech. Another thing it changes is your behavior. It changes how you behave. It changes how you walk and how you talk. You get to Romans chapter 12 and you start to read and it tells you, listen, beloved, in the message paraphrase, here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're eating, you're sleeping, you're walking around life and place it before God as an offering. In other words, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. How? By the 
renewal of your mind. When you study the word, listen, it changes your behavior. The other thing that the Bible study does is that it allows you time alone with God. You remember we said time and attention. It allows you time alone with God. Take a chunk of time just for yourself. Easy, uh, your spouse. That would be nice if you can study a book together. But you know even when you're married, see you also are striving towards Jesus together. And even by yourself. You can't just be carried by the faith of your spouse. The same way a child cannot be carried by the, space of, uh, by the faith of their parent. You must take chunks of time by yourself to allow time alone and God. Another thing that it does is that it makes the scripture an individual message to you. I think I'll stop here. It makes the scripture an individual message addressed to you. I don't know how many of you have read the Bible, just Bible reading, and you have seen something and you've thought, <laughs> oh, I wish Gatesh was here. I wish he could be here to hear that word. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have read the Bible and thought about somebody else. You read a verse and you, you think, hmm, <laughs> you copy, you paste, you send it to somebody. Nambia, my brother, I read this, I thought about you, let it encourage you today. What is that verse you've sent them? Oh, foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? <laughs> so my, oh, my brother, I read something and it made me think about you. Oh, umemtumia verse gani? The fool saith in his heart, there is no God. So, tunatumia scripture kukatana, uku kukatana tu. Those are effects of just reading the Bible. If you just stop there, it is easy for you to fall into that trap. But when you study the Bible, it makes the scripture an individual message that is addressed just to you. It starts to shine into you. In a kukata, wewe. We say this a lot in the youth service. Many times you're reading the Bible, and when you're studying the Bible, you start to realize, well, the fool they are talking about in Proverbs is me. <laughs> I am the fool. As you read the Bible, it makes it an individual message. It draws the light right to you. Because what does the Bible say, say about the word of God? It says in Psalm 119 verse 105, that your word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. Or is it the other way around? A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So that's why we must study the Bible. As we study it, and we, the example is this, that as it is a light or a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Those are two different things. It says a light to my feet. It is illuminating exactly where my feet should go. So in a washa ta hapa, in a washa ta pale pengine, it shows me where I should step. But path is the way I should follow. So it is not just a light to where I should step. It is also a lamp to the road I should follow. And I gave a, this example earlier, and I said, if I want to go to the school complex, I can go like this. You know, hypotenuse. I may try to in Guinea, but like an auditor may try to to fauti. So say you ni masomo nyingi wacha ni achana na yo. Ni tumi e inji amrefu. And I can go to the school complex. Sindio. Ni vinyetu ni tapita hapa, ni pande juu ya kina muriokis, ni wakanyage, ni pande hapo, ni pande hapo, ni pande ile kamlima, ni pite juu ya pipes, ni ende, ni jipate, ni mefika school complex. But there is a prescribed path for me to use. Sindio? So it is true, I might be seeing where I'm going. My steps can be clear, they can be lighted, but I'm not using the right path. When you study the word of God, it does those two things for you. It lights up the, where you should place your feet. You people are in business. You people are doing companies. You people are in employment. You people, some of you are in school. How do you know what to do in the next step apart from the help that comes, from the light that is in the word of God? It's not possible. This life is not difficult without studying the word, without the instruction of the word. It is impossible. I have a friend of mine that many times we like to ask each other, how do people do it? And believers, how do they do this life? It's just a lot of just risking, guesswork, missing. It's, it's so anxiety-inducing. Anxiety how can you go through life like that? We don't have to go through life like that. Buona sifiwe. Buona iso sifiwe. It is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. What the Bible does is that it shines the light back on me. As I am reading, I realize, eh, 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 eh. 
You see, the thing about the light is that it exposes evil for our good. There's a story that I read somewhere, and it said there's an old story about a desert nomad who woke up in the middle of the night feeling very hungry, and he lit a candle and began eating dates from a bowl that was beside his bed. And so he took a bite one day. Uh, he took the first bite of one, and he saw there was a worm inside of it, and so he threw it out. Then he took a second one, and he beat, and he saw there was a worm, and he threw it outside, and took a third one, and he saw, hey, there's a worm, he threw it out. But he was hungry, and it was the middle of the night in the desert. So what he did was that what any of us would do, he put out the candle and just ate the rest of them <laughs> without seeing, because he realized, eh, nitalalanja abuan, muangaza inaonyesha mambo mingi sana. You see, many times when we start to read the Bible, when we start to study the Bible, it starts to expose us. It starts to show us you're not as good as you thought you are. You are not the Christian you've been thinking you are. Take time to study the Bible. It starts to shout at you. We were at a meeting on Friday, at a conference on Friday, and the person that spoke, the people that spoke, whoo, we were just saying this conference, because they were shouting at us. You're thinking, is this the Bible? I remember we were reading about the story of Hophni and Phinehas. <laughs> Hophni and Phinehas. And it says, now these priests were good for nothing priests. They were worthless men. I'm thinking, imagine people know you as a priest, but God knows you as a worthless person. People know me as a believer, but God knows me as a, there's a word that it you, as a scoundrel in the King James. That's so bad. God forbid for sure. But as you study the word, you must study the word. You and I must give ourselves then to the practice of studying the word. Because as we study the word, what happens is that it shines the light on us, but it exposes the evil for our good. So that we are not eating the worms. Because we might be full, but then we'll be sick. So I'd rather be a little bit hungry, but not be unwell. Bonus if you sana. So thinking about those things then, very, very quickly, in just a minute, how should you then study the Bible? These are things that we've been doing, we've been looking at, but just for the sake of our sharing today, every time you want to study the word, approach it with humility. Approach it with humility. Come as if you want to be told. You come to studying the word with humility. I'm, I don't know anything. I, let me just come and be taught. Let me just... And to invite the worship team as they are coming up here. As you're approaching the Bible, approach it with humility. Pray before you start. It sounds like such elementary things, but imagine pray before you start. It lights up everything for you. Somebody said the only book you will ever read, where every time you read it, the author is present, is the Bible. Because if I write a book, and then you read a part and you don't understand it, and I'm not there, you don't know me, you start to wonder what, my, what was he meaning when he said this. But the Bible... Every time you open it, the author is present. So if you don't understand, so you ask him. And it's, the Bible is supposed to bring light. It doesn't make things harder. It doesn't make things darker. It makes things lighter. Such that a child in primary school can understand and a professor can get lost in the depths of it as well. So come to it with humility. Another thing, if you're struggling, consider reading the short books first. Consider reading the short books first. Hey, anza na ile, kitabu ya one chapter. Unasoma, study it, one chapter unamaliza. But if you tell me, pastor, I want to apply the word now from today. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Where do you want to begin? I want to begin with the Psalms. Hey. It is doable, but remember we said we are not competing with anybody. Kweli si kweli. It is to build our intimacy with God. Get different things. Get different ways. Like we said earlier, Apply what works for you. If it is 20, 20 minute chunks of time, apply that. You're not in competition with anybody. If you're those people who use 100,000 um, pens and biros, like my sister, Pastor Joy, you read her notes, my God, they are so colorful. She has like a million pens in every color. If you're those people, if it makes it exciting for you to be able to do it, do it then. If you're those people who will just want to use one pen and that pen must be black, like me, please do it. Whatever works for you, just make sure you are studying the Bible. And then finally, employ the use of other people. Use other people. You're not the only person studying the Bible. All of us are trying. And all of us, God is helping us. I said everyone, God is helping us. 
So ask somebody else. I'm trying to study this. I'm not understanding. What do you think it means? When we were coming from um, Nakuru in the month of June, Pastor Paul started a conversation in the car we were in, and he was asking us, what do we think it means, Romans chapter 8, verse 19, now creation is waiting earnestly for the manifestation of the sons of God. Let me tell you, we discussed that thing for so long, and then after that we had the revival, now we were able to understand it. As, employ the use of other people. Usijificha ya watu wa mungu, ni mejificha hivi, ni nangote, I am in the book of Zachariah. Nahum nitatokelezea hii vile siku nitaichomoa lakini pia hiyo pulpit wataelewa kwa sahihi yenu wasema i've just been reading something from the book of obadiah <laughs> employ the use of other people because we want to grow together so that when you're reading use commentaries like i said earlier ndio usipate everyone in the church thinks John 10.10 10 means the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But you are thinking, mm -mm, the revelation I got, these people are all wrong. It is highly likely, highly likely that I am the one who is missing it. Sinequeli, employ the use of other people. I want you to lift up your voice. Take a minute and just ask the Lord to help you. You know the areas where you need help. You know the areas where you need God to help you in the studying of the word, in the studying of the scriptures. Maybe you've just been stuck at reading the Bible. Maybe you have this lethargy and spiritual laziness where every time you want to study, you feel so tired. The Lord is able to refresh you. He's able to help you. It's a Christian spiritual discipline that must work for the believers. We must have the word in memory. We must analyze. We must apply. Maybe you're struggling with analyzing. Ask the Lord to help you with the resources that he has in heaven. Maybe you're struggling with memorizing. You're saying, me, I don't remember anything. But if you can remember your number, your ID number, then your memory is working just right. Ask the Lord to help you, to enable, to strengthen your memory, that you may have some scripture inside of you, so that when you stand in front or against the enemy, you can say to him, it is written, it is written, it is written, just like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Maybe yours is that you're struggling with analysis. Ask the Lord to help you to, to, uh, to, to, to study the word that you might be able to analyze it. Maybe you're struggling with application. Ask the Lord to help you, that you may be able to apply and apply rightly, that you might study the word and it will expose you to yourself and take yourself to God that he might help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for every voice that is lifted today. Oh God, these are the cries of your sons and daughters. And we are crying to you because we desire to study the word. We desire to be able to stand. We desire to be shown approved to you and then approved by you in the name of Jesus. So help us, Lord. The prayers we are making today, wherever it is that we are, it is us saying, help, have mercy on us. We ask that you would help us, my Father, because we pray these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen.